Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine FX YouTube channel. So today we're doing this soft body simulation with Typhlow and it's inspired by this launch video by Microsoft Windows over here. So you can see something very similar. So I'm using the Redefine FX logo in this tutorial just because I needed some kind of an object in the middle for it to be attracted to, but you can use any object you would want here. So first I actually want to create a camera so I know exactly where the frame ends and begins. So here I just do control C and then you can just move the target of the camera back to be aligned with the logo. So now you can see exactly where the edge of the frame is and we want these balls to come in from around the edges. So I'm actually just gonna make a box first. Hit auto grid and just make a box. And you can do align and click on the logo and align it to the center. Say OK. And you can do Alt X to see through it. So let me just see how big this is. OK, so this is almost the perfect size. Scale it up a little bit and maybe scale it on the Y axis to make it wider. So we actually need the spheres to be colliding with this invisible wall. As you can see, they're getting flattened out because there's this box that they're colliding with on the inside. So I'll just move this back like this, right? So only the front of the logo is sticking out. So there are many different ways you can give birth to these spheres. You could just go under helpers, tie flow, tie icon, and then make maybe four um, tie icons, right? One on each side and make sort of a box this way and then have the spheres be born from around the edges like this. But what we're gonna do is give birth to them by material ID. So I'm actually going to select this box, hold shift and copy it. You can do alt X to make it solid again, make it an editable poly and let's select polygon and delete the front one and the back one. And then just go under modifiers and select the shell modifier and give it an outer amount of 10 centimeters and collapse all yes and make it an editable poly again. And I'll just select the edge and select this edge over here and you can hit F4 on your keyboard to show the edges and I'll just do a ring which will select all the edges and then control and hit this polygon which will convert all the edges into a polygon selection and I want to give them a material ID of let's say two and you can hit control I on your keyboard to invert selection and set this ID to one so we're basically gonna give birth to these spheres only on material ID 2. Scale this down and move it back over here. And then I want to make sure that this box is bigger than that one. So I'll just scale this up so it's on the inside like this. And you'll see how this works in a second. So now we need to create a regular tie flow. Let's open the tie flow editor and I want to do a birth operator. And for now we can do give birth to particles per frame and let's do one per frame and we're gonna play with this more in a bit. Let's select this outer box and just rename it our collider box and we can hide it for now. And let's select the purple one and just say birth object box or something like that, right? And you can just do position object operator because we need to give birth to the particles on top of this object. I'll just say pick and select and say density by material ID and set the ID to two. So right now, if I change the color of the particles to something like red, so we can see them, there is always going to be a particle born on the only on the material ID two that we selected earlier, or maybe let me make it yellow so you can see better. So now let's turn these particles into spheres and we can do that just by adding a shape operator make it a 3D shape and set it to Geosphere mid-res. And then you can go under display and say display geometry. So now there are tiny spheres. So you can either change the scale right down here by enabling the size scale and playing with that. But I'm actually just gonna add the scale operator. And we need to set this pretty high. So I think I'll do something like 2500. So again, the reason why we're doing this is that if I switch back to my camera view, you can see that all of the spheres are being born outside of the frame and then they're just gonna fly in into the frame 
um, to create this effect that we have here. All right, so we can assign different colors to them before we move forward. So I'll just do material ID operator, set the material ID to random and the timing to continuous because as they're being born, they need to be continuously assigned a random ID. And I'll just do between one and three because we wanna have three colors, white, orange, and pink. And then you can open the material editor, select a new material, make a multi sub object, discard all material, set the number of them to three. And then I've already prepared these three materials. So I'll just do my orange material, say instance, my white material, say instance, and my pink material instance. And I'll just apply this multi sub object material straight to Typeflow. And here you go, they're being born with those three different random colors. So now we need to turn these into a cloth simulation. So I'll just add a cloth bind operator and you can see it's gonna display those ticks. So you can go under display geometry and uncheck mark particles with no geo. So under the binding stiffness for the cloth bind, I'll just set this to 0.7. So this controls how stiff um, the balls will be because as you can see, they're getting squished, but not too much, right? They sort of bounce back. So how stiff they are is controlled with um, the binding stiffness. So you can increase or decrease these values to get different looking effects. Enable the CUDA cloth collision solver. So you need to have a graphics card that's GTX 1070 or higher um, to make this work. Enable cloth collisions, enable self thickness, and let's set the thickness to 0.2 and the friction to zero. I don't really want them to have friction with each other. I want them to just slide off each other like this. So next we're gonna inflate these balls a little bit so that um, they have more stiffness to them. So I'll just do modify bindings, set the timing to continuous because I want them to be continuously inflated. If we only set it for one frame, they will immediately deflate again. So it needs to be set to continuous. And I wanna go under modify bindings and set the inflation to something like five centimeters. We might have to change this later. And you can see immediately on frame zero, it's gonna increase in size because it gets inflated immediately, right? It gets bigger, so it's working. Next, we need to attract them to this object. So for that, we need a find target operator. And for the target object, I'll just pick the redefine effects logo, set the target location as random, but there's only one target, so it doesn't matter. But the point, I'm gonna say random. If you say closest, each sphere will just fly to the closest point to it. But if you say random, it will attract to any random point on this logo. So again, this will give us this nice um, random behavior. So as you can see, it's working beautifully. They're colliding with each other, but they're not colliding with the logo. So for that, we need a collision operator. Pick the logo as our collider. And I'll just set the absolute collision radius to one centimeter. And that's just so that there's a little gap between the soft bodies and the logo. It just makes for a nicer look and there's no intersections or anything like that. So I'll just unhide by name and unhide our collider box and I want them to be colliding with this box as well, right? So that they don't cover the logo up front. So I'll just do pick this box, right? So now they're not allowed to go in front of the logo so I can just hide this collider box and we're getting closer and closer to this result. However, they're still allowed to go behind the logo. So I wanna fix that too. So I'll just do a cylinder auto grid and make a cylinder behind the logo and just extend it out and I'll move it up front like this and add it as a collision object. And then you can just select it and hide selection, right? So now if I switch into my main camera view, we are getting something that looks like this. So super close to our final result, still just a few things that I want to fix. So a lot of these spheres are intersecting and that's because they're being born on top of each other. And when these cloth simulations are born inside of each other, they don't really know how to deal with that and they just remain stuck for you know their entire life. So in the beginning, we want to go under the birth. I want to give birth to particles from zero to let's say 200. Let's enable the repeater and I want to give birth to just 10 spheres for one frame every 10 frames. Right, so the repeater is super helpful if you guys aren't using this. This is how you do it. So now every 10 frames, 
there will be 10 new spheres being born. So already we're avoiding a lot of that overlap. But as you can see, a lot of them are still being born on top of each other. So we can go back under position object. And here we have a feature called the separation. So I can just enable that. And now as the particles are being born, they will have a, a distance separation between them. So I'll just set the distance to 50. And so now they're being born with much larger gaps between them. But still, as you can see, we're running into issues. So I'm actually going to add the fuse operator. So the fuse operator will combine any two particles that are too close to each other within a defined radius. We can just leave everything at default settings. And now, as you can see, every 10 frames, new particles are being born. But if any two particles are within 25 centimeters of each other, um, then one of them is deleted and they're combined into one. So let me show you what happens if I disable it again. If I disable fuse, we're getting these particles stuck. If I enable fuse, then those particles disappear and we are only left with these, right? So each one is clean and now we're getting a much nicer effect. So again, if I switch into my main view, we are getting super close to that final result that we want. And we have a beautiful flow of particles coming in from all sides, filling in the frame like this. So now as just sort of final touches, we can play with the size of the sphere. So you can go back under scale. And I think I want to give them bigger size. So maybe let's do 3000. And let's give them a variation of maybe 25%. So they're not all the same size. If you wanted to do more like this effect here, um, then you just need to increase the variation much higher. So maybe I will do something like 75% make it uniform for the variation. <clears throat> and then you can increase the size much higher. So maybe you could do something like 5,500, right? And you get some small and some very big spheres. And then you would get something that looks more like this, which is also pretty cool, but I want it to be a bit more uniform. So I will reduce the variation back to 25% and maybe do 3,500 for the size. So this is entirely up to you, whatever you find cool. Now, as sort of another final touch, you can just add a force operator and give it a little bit of noise turbulence in the movement so that they move around a little bit more. So I'll just set this to curl noise, set the strength to maybe two centimeters and set the scale to something small, so like 0.1. And um, this is just going to help them move around a little bit and make it more random than it was before. Maybe that's too strong, so I'll just do one centimeter. So before I would render this out, we need to address some of these sort of quality issues. So if I do F4, you can see it just doesn't have enough geometry in the cloth. That's why you're getting these sharp edges. So what you can do is go back under shape and we selected the geosphere mid res. So you can change this to geosphere high res. And now you're getting a lot more detail in the geometry. And probably the most important thing you need to do is go under the tie flow settings main settings and set the time step to like one fourth. You may even want to do like one eighth um, to get much nicer quality. So now with the added geometry and more steps per frame, we're getting a much nicer simulation. So I'm going to run this through and show you the final result. All right. So I ran the simulation 400 frames. It only lasted like 30 seconds to sim this super fast. And this is our final result. So basically exactly what I had over here. And now as sort of a final, final touch, you can just add a relax modifier on top and you can set the relax value to like one and the iterations to two. So as you can see, if you look at the before and after, it just sort of smooths out any kind of sharper edges or anything in the cloth, right? Just smooth everything out beautifully. And you can also add a turbo smooth on top to smooth it out even more. So at this point, I would just unhide all of my lights and my little studio that I've prepared. And you can just enable the V-Ray IPR. And this is what it's going to look like rendered. So I have white background right now. You can just hide that and just do black background. And you know, you can play with this in After Effects and make it pretty. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. Hope that you learned a lot of new tips and tricks. We covered the birth by material ID, right? Only giving birth to the particles on certain parts of the, of the geometry. We also covered the fuse operator, fusing particles together if they are too close to each other. 
We covered the birth repeater, which is super helpful. You also have some inflation, some CUDA cloth, attracting objects to objects with fine target collisions. And don't forget that you can easily change the materials even after the simulation is done, right? So you can just maybe replace white with gold and maybe replace pink with silver, say instance. And now we're getting a different kind of a look, more of an Instagram sort of precious metal um, look that is pretty popular. So if you guys enjoy my style of teaching and you'd like to keep learning with me, there are 70 tutorials on the channel for both Typhlow and Phoenix FD. I also have the Typhlow Basecamp, which is a complete course for Typhlow, which you can check out. And I'm working on a new Typhlow course as we speak, so that's coming very soon. So if you guys found this helpful, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe because I will be uploading more tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.